Remember, just remember, Allah is the only guide. When your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall, remember, just remember, Allah sees it all. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, In the Names of Allah. And this series began with a discussion of the importance of the names of Allah, that it was or represents the most fundamental area of knowledge that every believer in God should have. And we went on to look at uh, statements which the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, made with regards to the names of Allah. The most famous one was that he has 99 names. And we looked at the meaning of him having 99 names, whether it was limited to 99 or whether it was, uh, you know, a number which the Prophet, ﷺ, with Allah's instruction, chose as a basic uh, minimum for one to learn, to understand, to implement in his or her life and to find with it a way to paradise. Then after going through that, we started to look at you know, issues concerning uh, deviation in Allah's names, how Allah's names might be misused in the past and how they continue to be misused in the present. And after that, we looked at certain basic rules governing Allah's names. You know, how should we approach them? Basically, we focused on the issue of language and how we understand language that we should take the names as they are in the language as God has revealed them as the prophet may God's peace and blessings be upon him understood them and his companions understood it and then the early generation and that's what we go with after that then we looked at the issue of the greatest name of Allah and that's where we were in the previous few uh, episodes we looked at the greatest name of Allah and concluded that that greatest name was none other than Allah itself. And we looked at the evidences to support that. Uh, we did mention that there were other opinions, but that the weight of evidence supporting that, that uh, it, Allah was the, in fact the greatest name, that seemed to be the strongest opinion. So that's what we went with. And on the basic basis of that, we began to look at the name Allah as the first of the 99 names that we would be looking at in this program. We agreed in the very beginning that in looking at the names, we would look at the meanings of the names, uh, we would look at how we should uh, deal with them relative to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how we should reflect them if there is a means of reflection in our own actions, in our character, etc. We said there are some names of Allah that we can't try to emulate, and among them is the name Allah itself. I mean, we cannot emulate Allah. Allah is the only true God worthy of worship. Now, for a human being, uh, it, there's no way that we can try to emulate that. There, no people should be worshipping us. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did say that if anyone was to be worshipped in this world in, uh, besides Allah, not instead of Allah, but besides Allah, it would be that a wife would be commanded to worship her husband. That was... Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, if that was to show the position of the man within the family structure, uh, and that is to prostrate before him, really not worship him in the sense of, you know, worship him as we worship God, but the prostration. And this is similar, it is a prostration of honor, similar to the prostration which the angels were required to do before Adam. So, 
uh, the wives uh, the wives are re- required to honor their husband. I mean, Prophet Muhammad didn't give the okay for them to prostrate before their husbands, but honoring them, obeying them, this is required of them. So, I mean, that is the maximum that one could say that uh, there is some element of reflection here. And children relationship to their parents. You could say that children are supposed to honor their parents. Allah has commanded that after Tawheed. You know, so many places in the Quran where Allah says, you know, that we worship Allah alone and bilwalidayni ihsana. And we should be dutiful, good to our parents. So that is the sort of next step. I mean, that's the closest that we could come to uh, honoring almost like worshiping uh, amongst human society. But we don't try to take on the characteristics of Allah in that respect. We can only say that as we are required to worship and honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is an element of honor which is due to some people within the society, honor which is due to Prophet Muhammad sallam, to his companions, to the Khalifa, to the people in authority. There's a certain element of honor. And the, f- the father in the family, the mother in the family, children in relationship to the parents. Then we looked at um, the, the origin of the name Allah. And we said that its origin was from Al-Ilah, according to the majority of opinion of Muslim grammarians, Arabic grammarians. Some did hold that it was a word without root, that it was a fixed word. It has no uh, root from which it was derived. That's another opinion, but the majority held that it was from Al-Ilah. And as a meaning, meaning, we said that it contains in it all of the meanings of the other names of Allah, because all of the various constructions, grammatical constructions in which the name Allah is mentioned in the Qur'an, along with other names of Allah, they all come as descriptions of Allah. They all comes, uh, come as further descriptions of Allah. So it means then that all that they contain is contained within the name Allah. Just as if we took the name of a person, we said Muhammad, then we described him as a carpenter, a father, a uh, politician, a whatever. All the other descriptions that we give, those descriptions are descri- they're all representing characteristics which Muhammad has. So similarly, when we see the various verses in the Quran where Allah uh, mentions the name Allah first, and then after that we see other names coming, they are descriptions of the name Allah. Just in the Basmala itself, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So uh, in the name of Allah and then descriptions of Allah. Who is he? Ar-Rahman the most beneficent, Ar-Rahim, the most merciful. So from that, it was concluded that the name Allah contains the meanings of all of the various names. So then, from a practical point of view, in terms of how do we as human beings uh, utilize that name in our day-to-day life? Well, we said that we follow the instruction of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to this name of Allah. And there are two basic ways that he has instructed us to use that name. On one hand, he gave us the Basmala, that's just Bismillah, saying it before certain acts and in order to achieve certain goals, before certain prayers, etc. He gave that. And the other is Allahumma, which means, O oh Allah, you're calling on Allah, that we use these two phrases or these two expressions using the name of Allah throughout our day. And we said that the purpose of all of that was to keep us in touch with the awareness of Allah, that we are constantly aware and conscious of Him in our lives because of the fact that that if we are conscious, then it means that we are able 
to make the right choices. With an awareness of God, we can do the right thing. With an awareness of God, we can avoid evil. Where we forget God, where we uh, become negligent, then that's when we go astray. And that's why we have that in Islam, as is stated in the Quran and elsewhere, that you know the use of drugs, alcohol, is forbidden because of the fact that it takes away a person's consciousness and then he, he or she becomes subject to the evil influences of the forces around in the society. So, Prophet Muhammad then prescribed for us on a very basic level the use of the Basmala and Allahumma in a variety of acts that we do in the day. And we began uh, in the last program with the supplications of the morning and the evening and that uh, was begun with uh, Allahumma and we talked about the supplication of the Basmala before we eat our meals and pointed out of course that again this was a basic, ordinary, mundane act that people do by using Bismillah before eating and eating in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. then we turn that act into worship of Allah. And we also mention that we would use that uh, the name of Allah in Allahumma Prior to going into the bathroom, we mentioned that. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khaba'ith. We talked about that before. We sought refuge in Allah from uh, evil male and female jinns, corruption. Uh, anyone only has to go into a public bathroom to, to see what kind of corruption goes on there. Anyway, from there we went to uh, the wudu uh, and uh, what should be said to begin wudu, and that was with the basmala. And at the end of wudu, we also added that we say, uh, Allahumma, uh, Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabin wa ja'alni min al-mutatahirin. O Allah, make me of those who constantly turn back to you in repentance and of those who constantly purify themselves. And that was basically where we reached in our last program. This is just summing up what went before. Oh, we did also touch on uh, the beginning of prayers, but we'll look at that after we come back from the break. So we're going to take a brief break now and then we'll carry on looking at places. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. I'd like to welcome you back, dear viewers, to our series In the Names of Allah. And before the break, we were looking at uh, some of the places where Prophet Muhammad وسلم, specified for us to utilize this greatest name of Allah. And we reached the wudu, that we should uh, use it in the beginning of wudu. And this is a place where people commonly actually neglect its usage. Uh, many people are not aware that the Prophet ﷺ had said that uh, there's no prayer without wudu and there's no wudu without saying Bismillah. Uh, scholars have taken that to mean that the wudu is incomplete. But bottom line is that we should utilize Bismillah before making wudu. And that, we said, was to put it in a spiritual context so that we don't get caught up in the physical act of wudu. Similarly with our prayers, the wudu prepares us spiritually to go into the prayer. And the prayer should have that spiritual uh, content. It should have that spiritual uh, expression for it to be of real value. Otherwise, the physical act, uh, we can train a monkey to go through the movements of prayers. And as those prayers don't benefit the monkey any, similarly, a human being who goes through 
prayers like a monkey without having any understanding, then we have to say that there's no benefit to those prayers. As Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said, some people pray and only half of the value of the prayer goes up to Allah. And other people pray and absolutely nothing goes up. So this is the reality that uh, we have to keep in mind when we consider our daily prayers. And um, we mentioned in our previous segment that in the beginning of the prayer, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to pause before reciting the Qur'an, and the companions asked him, uh, you know, what were you doing? What were, what were you saying? And he told them that I was saying, Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriq wal-maghrib. O Allah, distance me from my sins as you have distanced the east from the west. And so on further with the dua. Also, whenever the Prophet ﷺ went into rukur or into sujood, when he bowed and he prostrated in prayer, his wife Aisha related that he used to commonly say, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, Allahumma ghfirli. Glory and praise be to you, O Allah. O Allah, forgive me. So we find Allahumma repeated twice in this. This is one of the du'as for bowing and prostrating. Also when he came out of rukur, when he stood back up saying, Sami Allahu liman hamida, that is, Allah hears the one who praises him, he would then go on to say, Allahumma rabbana wa lakal hamd. Commonly we just say, Rabbana lakal hamd, but it's also narrated from the Prophet Wasallam that he used to say, Allahumma, O oh Allah, Rabbana, our Lord, lakal hamd. All praise is due to you. And at the end of his daily prayers, he taught his companions a variety of different prayers to say, supplications, before closing off the prayer. Among them is one which Abu Bakr was taught by the Prophet Wasallam, and he passed it on to us. That is, Allahumma inni dhalamtu nafsi dhulman kathira. وَلَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ فَاغْفِرْ لِي مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ عِنْدِكْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That is, O oh Allah, verily I have really wronged myself a lot. And none can forgive sins except you. So forgive me with your forgiveness and have mercy on me. فَاغْفِرْ لِي مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ عِنْدِكْ وَارْحَمْنِي So forgive me and with your forgiveness, have mercy on me. Indeed, you are the most forgiving, the most merciful. This is the dua which the Prophet ﷺ taught to Abu Bakr. There's another dua which he taught many of the companions. And they reported that he used to teach it to them the way that he taught a chapter from the Qur'an. Meaning that he put great stress on it. Many of them were taught it. That is... Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-jahannam wa min adhab al-qabr wa min fitnat al-mahya wal mamat wa min sharr fitnat al-masih al-dajjal O oh Allah I seek refuge with you from the punishment of hell and the torment of the grave the trials of living and dying and from the trials of the antichrist seeking refuge from dajjal the antichrist was something the Prophet ﷺ taught the way he used to teach a chapter from the Qur'an. Also, we also have uh, that towards the end of the prayer, he used to seek refuge from a, a variety of different bad characteristics. Among them, he used to seek refuge from uh, sin and debt, unpayable debts. And the companions noted that at the end of the prayer he would commonly say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ma'thami wal-maghram. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from sin and unpayable debts. So they asked him, why is it that you're always seeking refuge from these unpayable debts? Al-maghram. He said, indeed, when a person 
becomes indebted and he is unable to pay up the debts, he begins to lie whenever he speaks and he breaks his promises whenever he gives them. So these are two evil characteristics to be constantly lying when one is speaking and breaking one's promise whenever they give the promise. So Prophet Muhammad sought uh, refuge using Allahumma, seeking refuge from the precursor, what would lead to that situation, and that is the unpayable debts. And this is from this, actually, from this dua of the Prophet ﷺ. The scholars derive the principle of sadd al-dhara'ah, that is, preventing an evil by preventing or prohibiting the things which lead up to that evil. So this was the prof Prophet's practice, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to uh, seek refuge from unpayable debts. Also, he used to seek refuge, as narrated by Anas ibn Malik, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal wal-jubn wal-haram. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from weakness. A weakness which leads us not to do the things that we are capable of doing. And from laziness. Laziness which further dis uh, discourages us from doing even the obligatory acts. Also from cowardice, cowardliness. And from senility, where in old age we lose our minds, we don't have an awareness of what is going on around us, we seek refuge in Allah from that. Besides that, Prophet Muhammad gave us, obviously with instruction from Allah SWT, the use of the basmala as a means to exercise uh, possessing evil spirits. This is something which perhaps to some degree has uh, gone astray in many Muslim countries where exorcisms are performed using a variety of methodologies which have nothing to do with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And some people go so far on to the other side as to say, exorcism is a joke. People are not possessed. It's not possible for the jinn, evil spirits, to possess a human being. They deny it altogether. But in fact, possession is a reality. Spirits do on occasion, evil spirits from among the jinn, do on occasion possess people. I would say that probably most of the cases that people tend to attribute to possession may not be possession at all. It could be a lot of other factors. Those people who are involved in this field of treatment, spiritual treatment, exorcisms for people who are possessed, point out that most of the cases are uh, people's, you know, um, struggling to deal with either problems in the home, psychological problems, a variety of other things, and it's not really possession. But from time to time, there does come real cases of possession. And this incident, I will relate it to you, is an incident narrated by Ya'la ibn Marra, and this is an authentic hadith, uh, one which is collected by Ahmed ibn Hanbal in his Musnad. In it, he said, Once I went traveling with the Prophet, and we came across a woman sitting with her child. She said, O Messenger of Allah, this boy has been afflicted and has caused us many trials. I don't know how many times a day he seized with fits. The Prophet ﷺ said, give him to me. And he, she raised the boy up to him and he took the boy and placed him in the middle of his saddle. And he then opened the boy's mouth. He blew in the boy's mouth three times and he said, Bismillah, ana abdullah, ikhsa adu Allah. In the name of Allah, 
I am a slave of Allah. So get away, O enemy of Allah. This was the Prophet Sallallahu statement. This hadith, authentic as it is, is clear evidence of possession. But it also teaches us the correct methodology for dealing with it. Not what many people are involved in around the world. And we'll look into that in more detail uh, in our coming session on In the Names of Allah. We will be looking further at other prescriptions which the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, gave us in order to deal with issues of spiritual possession. With that, dear viewers, I bid you all farewell, hoping to see you again in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. When life is a burden and everything is unstable, remember, just remember, Allah is the able. When nothing makes sense and you're heading for demise, Remember, just remember, Allah is the wise.